the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. My brothers and sisters, let us prepare ourselves for this Holy Mass by first confessing our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, what I have done and what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary and the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us. May he forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray, Almighty, ever-living God, whom, taught by the Holy Spirit, we dare to call our Father, bring, we pray, to perfection in our hearts the spirit of adoption as your sons and your daughters, that we may merit to enter into the inheritance which you have promised us. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Thank you. 
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, I speak the truth in Christ, I do not lie. My conscience joins with the Holy Spirit in bearing me witness that I have great sorrow and constant anguish in my heart. For I could wish that I myself were accursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my own people, my kindred according to the flesh. They are the Israelites. There is the adoption, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the worship, and the promises. There is the patriarchs, and from them, according to the flesh, is the Christ, who is over all. God bless forever. Amen. The word. Brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. After Jesus had fed the people, Jesus made the disciples get into a boat and precede him on the other side 
while he dismissed the crowd. After doing so, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. When it was evening, he was there alone. Meanwhile, the boat, already a few miles offshore, was being tossed about by the waves, for the wind was against it. During the fourth watch of the night, Jesus came toward them, walking on the sea. When the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified. It is a ghost, they said. They cried out in fear. And once Jesus spoke to them, take courage, it is I, do not be afraid. Peter said to him in reply, Lord, if it is you, command me to come out to you on the water. He said, come. Peter got out of the boat and he began to walk on the water towards Jesus. But when he saw how strong the wind was, he became frightened. And beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus stretched out his hand and he caught Peter. He said to him, O you of little faith, why did you doubt? After they got into the boat, the wind died down. Those who were in the boat did a homage, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Fear is part of being a human being. You can't get rid of it, you can't erase it. It's there. Today's first reading, the prophet Elijah, one of the great prophets of the Old Testament, who wasn't afraid of anything. He preached the word of God even though the people turned against him. He wasn't afraid of the people. God gave that courage. But there was one person, one thing he was afraid of. What was it? He was afraid of Jezebel. Jezebel was married to the king at that time. She was a vicious, cruel woman. Deceitful, cunning. One of the worst type of women you could find around. She would get rid of you within seconds if she had to. She would have been killed, and she did that. Elijah began to preach out against her and those in the palace. When she heard about it, she said, I'm get that guy. He's going to get it. And he found out that she was after him. And here's where the reading comes in. He ran into the desert, afraid of her. Ran into a cave and stayed in there for fear that she would find him. And this is where God comes in. This is my prophet, God said. This is my man. I want him to do his work, but he's afraid. So God visits him in the cave according to the reading. And he comes to him in a very slow, slight whisper. There was an earthquake, God was not in the earthquake. There was lightning and thunder, but God was not in the lightning and thunder. Well, where is, where is he? Because God said, I'm going to pass by. He was in a whisper that he heard the cave. A little whisper. He said, my God, that's God. That's God. What are we being told here by this here? Because you and I are believers. I'm glad you're here tonight. You believe in God. So now we've got to get the gifts that he wants to give us. Are you ready to receive the gifts of God? Are you? If you're ready to receive the gifts of God, he's ready to give them to you. But you've got to be open. The morning glory is looking for the sun. It closes up at night. But then when the sun comes out, it begins to open up, doesn't it? I love morning glories. My father had them by the window. And I remember going up all along the window 
and I used to enjoy watching those beautiful trumpet flowers. But it was closed at night. The only time I could see it was it opened up in the morning with the sun. When the sun went down, it closed again. That's us. All of us have fears. There are five major fears in everybody's life. You're not going to get away with it. Some have it more than others. Some are paralyzed by their fears. Paralyzed. I just cannot go to a wedding party. And that's all there is to it. Why? You have a good time. A lot of fun. Music, dancing, liquor. You have a lot of fun. Not me. I don't like to do things like that. I don't like to go out in public. That I can't stand being outside. Agrophobia. I can't be on the height, I start trembling. And if I see you on the height, I start trembling. And I want it to see you on the height, because you fall down, you're gonna die. One of the biggest fears is height. Another fear is being with people. Another fear is what I'm doing here. I'm so used to it that I don't know if God has given me the power to do it, but I'm not afraid to get up and speak. But if I ask one of you, don't start saying he's talking to me. We're all bad at you. If I were there, I would be afraid too to come up and read. Come up and preach. What do I, what do, I do? What do I do? Yeah. And then I get disappointed in myself. I lash myself. I punish myself. You're a chicken. You're a coward. You should be able to do that. Your friends do it. Don't feel that way. If that's a fear you have, that's a fear you have. Now the thing we should try to do is get rid of it. How did Elijah get rid of his fear of Jezebel? How did he get rid of it, the fear? Are you afraid of somebody in your block, in your school, where you work? Are you afraid of somebody who want to see her or see him? It's no fun going to work, is it? It's no fun going to school, is it? You're going to meet those bullies that are going to torture you in school. Some kids go through that. This what I'm saying is not made up. I'm talking about life. I was for certain people. I hope you're not in that category. But if you are, I'm talking to you and I'm talking to me because I have my own fears. I'm afraid of things too. So tell me you're a priest. Yeah, Elijah was a prophet. We're all human. The only one I think that did not have any fears was Jesus. I think he's the only one that didn't have it. I don't see anything in his life where he was afraid of anything or anybody. How did he get that strength? What did Elijah get it from? Where am I going to get it from? Where are you going to get it from? I tell you, look at what goes on at AA meetings. These are people that were condemned and damned by liquor. It kills them. They know it. But I gotta have it. They're, they're, they're powerless over it. I'm powerless. All I have to do is smell some loving alcohol. I'm off into the moon. I want it. I remember when I was working at a retreat house in Andover, Massachusetts. A man calls New Year's Eve. Is this a priest? I said, yes it is. Can I help you? Yeah, Father. I'm supposed to go to a party tonight. I said, good, enjoy the evening. Well, you know, and then it finally came out. I'm an alcoholic. Now he's asking me, after going to AA for years, you're asking me to say it's okay to have a beer? That's what he said, you think I can have a beer? I said, what do you think? What do you know about? How did that man get out of the water? For so many years of being drowning in here every day of his life, killing himself, destroying his body and his brain. He got out by what they call a higher power. A higher power. Now it could be anything. I hope it's not a rabbit's foot. But it could be anything that you look up to that you believe is going to give you power. And that's how alcoholics come out of the bottle and they stay out of it for 10 years. 15 years, 20, 30, 50 years they could stay out of that water. How did you do it? I couldn't do it on my own. I couldn't do it on my own. 
They'll confess to you. I couldn't do it. But how did you do it? I went to a higher power. The Bible is filled with situations that you just saw tonight about these poor men afraid of going to drown in the sea. It must be a horrible feeling. Can you imagine those people in the, in the Titanic? Can you imagine the people in the Titanic? What if you were one of them? What if I was one of them? It could be. We could have been there. I could have been one at that time. I could have been leaving and going to America on this beautiful new boat. Nothing will bring it down, he said. It was going down. We all ran up to the higher part of the boat, kept on avoiding the water because it was going more and more into the water. And they were just waiting to go into the water and that. Horrible, isn't it? Horrible. I wouldn't want to be in that boat for all the money in the world. And yet, I can imagine some people inspired while they were going down to sing a hymn. To sing a hymn. Those people were believers. So I say to you with your fears, you all know what your fear is, the fear of losing money, the fear of losing popularity, that nobody likes me, self-pity, I'm not beautiful enough, I'm not handsome enough, I'm not smart enough, I'm not able enough. Are those your fears? Being in public, being in a plane, that's one of the biggest ones in the world is getting into an airplane. I remember my first trip in an airplane. I didn't want to get into that plane. Why didn't you want to get into it, Father? Well, planes are very safe. You think that pilot wants to die? He's going to keep it going up there. I couldn't understand how this massive, heavy, heavy, heavy metal thing could stay in the air. It was done. And now I'm not as afraid I still have that feel when I get in the plane. I don't like it. What am I afraid of? I'm afraid of dying. So my brothers and sisters, it's realities. We're not here to talk about fluffy things to make us happy and feel good. We're talking about life. People's fears. Getting old. Losing your husband or wife. Losing my child. Losing my mind. People lose their minds, they feel it coming, something's wrong, I can't remember anything. Fear. Yet there's a way out. It's very simple. And it's this. Jesus said, why didn't you trust in me, Peter, when I asked you to get off the boat? Why didn't you trust me? Well, you know, why didn't you trust me? You were doing all right. You were walking on the water. And all of a sudden, you start going down. Why did you go down? Because you lost your faith and trust in me. See what's being said to us tonight as believers and Christians. The best way to fight fear is to really, 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 no baloney or phony, really believe in God that he's going to help you. That he's going to strengthen you. Whatever I have to face in life, he's going to strengthen you. I'll end by this way. As a chaplain in the hospital, end of the parish, I saw a lot of people die. I saw people die like angels. In bed, their last breath, and their head just goes down to the side. Before all the stuff with the, the, the opioids and so forth, come you with all kinds of things, so you don't feel anything. Today we have to worry about dying. They'll deaden your brain with something, so you won't even know what's going on. And then I've seen people in a rage, holding on to whatever they had. I'm not going to die. And it's going to happen. So there's what the question the answer is. I know it's hard to do, but if you have an honest to God, no phony baloney, an honest to God, trust in God, say, God, whatever comes, I'm ready for it. Not because it's me, Lord, I'm a weakling. I'm a weakling, but because of you, I trust that whatever happens to me, you're gonna be there with me, and you're gonna bring me right through. Let us stand and pray. I believe in God, the Father of my neighbor and of all this is in this world. I believe in our Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God. 
for all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begot not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men, for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was encountered the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. His kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who together with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And so now we pray. Aware of God's quiet presence at work in our lives, we place our needs now before Him. For Pope Francis' successor, Peter, may God continue to bless him with good health and vitality. Let us pray the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. For our elected officials, may God graciously watch over them in their service to their people. Let us pray the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those sinking in the waters of pain or fear, may Christ, the divine physician, calm them and grant them peace of mind. Let us pray the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all gathered here today, may the Holy Spirit help us more firmly embrace our faith in the loving God. Let us pray the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For civic leaders, medical personnel, and others coordinating the response to the coronavirus, may God give them wisdom and strength. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those infected with the recovery from the coronavirus, may Jesus, the divine physician, offer them hope and healing. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, may they be welcomed Let us pray for the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. This evening's Mass is being offered for Angela Gardino for Memorial Mass, for Anna and Anthony Russo, Sarah and, Sarah and his father, Fabiano, and his family, for Lena and Joseph Pregnancy, and for Louise Sylvester. For these, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Hear our prayers as we seek to be the hands and the feet of Jesus each day. We ask everything through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated now for the offertory.
my brothers and sisters, pray now that this my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Amen. Be pleased, O Lord, to accept the offerings of your church, for in your mercy you have given them to be offered, and by your power you transform them into the mystery of our salvation through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For when your children were scattered afar by sin, through the blood of your Son and the power of the Spirit, you gathered them again together to yourself, that a people formed as one by the unity of the Trinity made the body of Christ and the temple of the Holy Spirit might to the praise of your manifold wisdom be manifest in the church. And so, with the company of angels and the saints, we praise you as we sing. Indeed, holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and he entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it. He gave it to his disciples and said, Take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and the eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. As we celebrate the memorial of his death and his resurrection, 
We offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and of the blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Sean, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and our sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. All who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, of her spouse, Saint Joseph, the Blessed Apostle, the Holy Martyrs, all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. And now, let us pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation. Lord, deliver us, we pray, from every evil. Grace your grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory of God is now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Grace you grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. You will live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Brothers and sisters, behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy you should enter into my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life. Amen.
us stand now for the final prayer. May the communion of this sacrament that we have consumed save us, O Lord. Confirm us in the light of the truth and dispel every fear that we have in our minds. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is finished. Leave in, let us leave in peace now to love God and to trust Him. Thanks be to God. Have a good evening, everybody. Thank <laughs> you.